How do we make plastic in Blender? That is the question of the day. I'm gonna show you guys how I made two different plastic materials in Blender. But first, I wanna tell you how I got there. I was scrolling through Pinterest, like one does, and looking at these cool renders, and I was running across this awesome plastic-like material. And I asked myself, how do I get this cool plastic material in Blender? Check this out. You see this? Amazing. Amazing. And, and then this on the other side of it. No roughness, just clear. But also plastic. And then look at this. This is like the holy grail of plastic renders. I mean, I think it's a render, but then again, it could be a photo. Who knows? Okay, so let's dive into Blender. Okay, I have a simple cycle scene set up in here, and I have this model that I've already modeled. It's pretty simple. And I have a floor, a few lights, and that's about it. Okay, so what we're going to do is go into our shader editor. So I'm just going to drag this up. I'm going to add a new material to our object. We get our principal BSDF. And we're just going to go in here and type in glass. You will see that we have a glass BSDF, a glossy BSDF. We even have a translucent BSDF and a transparent BSDF. What we don't have is a plastic BSDF. So what that tells me is that we're going to have to get creative. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and add a glass shader. Now, what does a glass shader do? The glass BSDF is used to add a glass-like shader mixing refraction and reflection at grazing angles. Like the transparent shader, only pure white will make it transparent. So in other words, if we take the color down to black, it will be less transparent. Up closer to white, it'll be more transparent. Seems simple enough. Let's bring in an add shader node so that we can connect both of our shaders and connect that to the material output. Now I'm just gonna name this material and add it to the next layer of our button. In our principal BSDF, we're gonna change our ROR to 1.4. Then we're gonna change our transmission weight to around 0.5. Okay, the only thing missing at this point in our principal BSDF is choosing our base color, but we're going to wait for that. First, let's go into our glass shader really quick, and let's dial this in. Let's choose a color, and let's go to like middle gray. Right around there looks good. And we're going to match the IOR to our principal BSDF, so 1.4, and we're going to add just a little bit of roughness, 0.1. Now it's time we choose our base color. Let's pick something close to black, not all the way black. Okay, this is where things get interesting. I want to bring in some fingerprints to add as a roughness map. Let's go ahead and drag that in. You can find the link to this free roughness imperfection map in the description. In our image texture node, you're gonna change flat to box. You're gonna change the blend to 0.5, and you're gonna make sure that the color space is non-color. Now connect the color to the roughness in the principal BSDF. You will need Node Wrangler for this next part, so go into your add-ons and turn it on. It comes free with Blender. Now you can go over to your image texture node, hit Control T, and that'll give you image texture coordinates. In order for us to see what's going on in our render view, we're gonna hit Control Shift Click on our image texture node. You wanna connect object to the vector. Okay, you can see in our render view that our roughness map is appearing correctly on our object. Now let's go ahead and change our scale to 0.09. Don't forget to change the X, the Y, and the Z. In order to gain some control, we're gonna go ahead and add a color ramp. Let's control shift click the gradient ramp. Everything that's in black will disappear and everything that is in white will intensify. Let's dial this in. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we're doing and we're gonna go ahead and click control shift click on our add shader node. If we render that out, we see that it's looking pretty good. The only thing I would do here is just dial in the base color. When it comes to plastic, especially blacks, I would like to go more on the lighter side than the darker side. I think that's how you sell the illusion a little bit more. On top of that, 
I want to be able to see through the plastic just a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and go into the glass shader and bring up that color just a little bit. And that's it for the first method. Let's render it and check it out. It looks good. Look at this photo I took of glass next to plastic. Or is it plastic next to glass? Overall, they look pretty similar. After I made that first material, I really started to get to thinking, what is the difference between plastic and glass? After a quick search of Google and reading a few of these articles, I realized that the answer really is that unless we tap on the material, we really can't tell. But all of us know that we can tell the difference between plastic and glass. So what is that difference? After looking at hundreds, if not thousands of images of glass and plastic, I realized it's the small imperfections between them two that really make them look like either plastic or glass. In comes method number two. In this method, we're going to focus on how do we add these imperfections that plastic has that our brain recognizes and says, hey, that is plastic. All right, I'm going to zoom into this image here and you can see that and you can see that we have our fingerprint texture still going through our roughness. But on top of that, if you notice, we have this noise texture running through our normals that gives our keys this plastic feel. OK, I'm going to show you how we can do that. All right. First, let's go ahead and bring up our shader editor. Now we're gonna go ahead and click a new material. Now this is very similar to the way we did the last one. So you guys should know how to do some of this stuff by now. So we're gonna move a little quicker. We're gonna click new. And in new, let's start with our base color. Let's pick whatever color we want. I wanna go for that purple, perfect. Our roughness, we're gonna leave alone because we're gonna put a map in there. Our IOR, we're gonna click 1.4, same as last. We're gonna go into our transmission, but because we have a color, I wanna bring this up this time. Instead of 0.5, we wanna bring this all the way up, okay? And that just is how much light is being allowed into our object, how much light is being allowed to transmit through the object. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing as last, add a glass, BSDF, great. We're gonna add a add shader, connect those two. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And we can see right away that this white is allowing a lot of transparency. So we're going to go ahead and dial that in. Bring it down right around where we had our mid gray. Yeah, that, look, that looks right. Our roughness, we're going to leave alone. Okay. We're going to leave it alone for now. We're going to match the IOR one point four right and uh if we want to dial this in later we'll come back to it okay so we're gonna go ahead and add our texture let's see let's drag in our roughness change flat to box blend to 0.5 and make sure our color space is non-color on this node click it and then hit Control t we'll get our texture coordinate nodes Change from UV to object, so object to our vector. Now let's go over to our texture node and click Control Shift Click. Okay, now we can see what's going on here. Next, we're gonna go into our mapping node and dial this in. Now let's change our scale back to what we already know what we like it at. So 0 0.09. Change every single one of them, X, Y, and Z. 0 0.09, 0 0.09, 0 0.09, 0 0.09. And in our location, you'll want to play with the X, Y, and Z value so you get the perfect location for your texture. I know where I want it, so I'm going to put that in now, which is 4, 0, 4. Okay, now it's time we drag in a color ramp so we get some control over this texture. Put it here. Control shift click the color ramp. Let's drag this over. Everything in black will disappear. Everything in white, if you slide it over, will intensify the closer you drag to that black point. If we go over here and control shift click this, it'll plug it back into the material output, and you can see that it's a little bit too translucent for me right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go back in here really quick and just dial this down just just a little bit that's not bad next if we zoom in we see that okay we have our fingerprints going but we don't have that texture we don't have that normal going on top of these buttons how do we do that okay this is super simple 
we're gonna go in here and essentially we need to add noise to the image now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for a musgrave texture and then we're gonna add a bump node we're gonna connect the height into the height the normal into the normal and we're gonna change the strength here to 0.15 change the distance to 0 0.01 and then the scale and I guess we can control shift click this so we can see so you can see the scale here now we're gonna change this to 500 check out what happens see that now let's go ahead and plug in our shader see that go ahead and render that and that's how you get a beautiful plastic now that you've had plastic, grab your plastic objects and go crazy. If you would like to support this channel, a like on this video would help a lot and a subscribe even more. So I hope to see you guys around. And if you got this far, thank you for watching.